Yes, so hello and welcome back to CS492 Foundation and Future of Virtual Reality, Artificial Intelligence and MMORPGs. This is uh, the last session with a contributed talk uh, covered in this lecture. Also, <clears throat> after today's session, we will start, uh, we'll upload in KLMS your final assignment, your final essay, writing essay, asking you to summarize part three. Yeah, after today's uh, uh, presentation, please stay online for uh, so that we can take a final uh, snapshot, uh, uh, kind of a picture of all participants with your video turned on. So after this uh, introductory remarks about administrative matters, now we are ready to uh, proceed to the second part of the presentation about distributed computing simulations, the second part of the talk uh, by uh, uh, Inhui. So let me um, put the spotlight on Inhui. And please go ahead sharing your slides. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think you can see my slides properly. So yeah, I'm going to start my presentation uh, from now. So yeah, good afternoon and welcome to the final and the second presentation of distributed computer systems. So before we go to the details of today's lecture, I would like to uh, have a recap on what we went through last class. So uh, from the index, we have seen that, uh, we have seen through the part three TRAM problems, and I'm gonna uh, have a little bit of recap on each of them. So we first learned that uh, we had some introduction slides about MMORPG and distributed computer simulations. So, and then we had a sympathetic notation, which will be used uh, last class and also today. And I went through AMDA's law, which is an important uh, theory on the part on computer systems mainly, but also important in parallel environments. And then we learned about the concept of parallel random access machine. So, which is a parallel computation model that consists of a processors and shared memory. And we learned about several kinds of PRAM, including EREW, CREW, and CRCW. Then we found out that there are several conflict resolution strategy for a CRCW PRAM. And we learned about the um, uh, sorting algorithms that could be done with PRAM and maximum finding algorithm that could be efficiently solved using PRAM. Then we look into problems that PRAM has to be solved in order to be used on a realistic machine. So that problem is also called as the PRAM simulation problem, which uh, has to overcome that uh, there is no shared memory that is shared by numerous processors. So we would like to find out the amount of slowdown on a simulation of a CRCW PRAM into a per realistic parallel machine, which we think is bounded degree network. So we first went through uh, what sub problems do, how can we divide this PRAM simulation sub pro problem into several sub problems. And we uh, learned about how these uh, sub problems work in a simulation. Then we uh, talked about the quality of PRAM, including slowdown and efficiency. And then I went through the first uh, sub problem, which is concurrent access problem. And I came up with a algorithm that could solve that could have a slowdown of only of big zeta of log n uh, 
solving this concurrent access problem. So this, this was the end of part one that I did last class. And uh, we will continue with today's presentation. So from now on, we will focus on two ways of solving the memory managed problem and the routing interconnection problem, which is deterministic simulations and random simulations. As the word deterministic mean, on deterministic simulations, the model determines the behavior. <coughs> behavior. So we'll start with the deterministic simulations first. So memory management problem is a simulation of an ERE-W PRAM on a model parallel computer. The difference between ERE-W PRAM and MPC is that the memory modules are not totally shared, but they are copied and connected via fully connected network. Therefore, copying is inevitable for speed up. The most simple but inefficient simu simulation would be to copy every data into the local memory. This will lead to a read cost of big O of one, but on write, because every copy should be updated upon every, because every copy should be update, updated upon a single update, it will lead to a write cost of a big O of N. Since the write cost is higher than the read cost in this algorithm, we can reduce the cost of write with the trade-off of read cost. This could be done by not updating every copy and the write timestamp. So you just have to update more than half of the copy and the write stamp there. Then on each read, if you can read just more than the half of the copy, then there will be at least one value that has recently been updated, which can be checked through timestamp. I'll explain this more spe specifically with an example. So let's, uh, let's assume that there are seven copies in total, where orange color means that the data is valid, and the blue color means that the data is stale. So we will update four copies with the timestamp, which makes three copies stale then the result will be like this. In this case, no matter how you select four copies on a read, then there will be at least one value that has recently been updated, like this. Even an arbitrary choice includes three copies that are stale, you inevitably select at least one copy that is valid. And the valid copy could be checked through the timestamp where you can simply choose the copy that has the recent timestamp. So the time complexity of this solution depends on the number of copies that you maintain. I won't prove this, but the slowdown using only updating the major majority of the copy is big omega of m over n to the power of one over two times r where m is the number of memory locations, n is the number of processors, and r is the number of copies. There is a trade-off between space complexity, where you have to maintain more copies on the memory, and the time complexity. So in order to have a big O of log n slowdown, we will need big omega of log m divided by n divided by log log n copies. There are several other techniques to reduce the copy of the memory or reduce the slowdown. The optimal slowdown would be big O of log n divided by log log n, where the number of copies will be big O of log m divided by log log m. Next, we will look into routing and interconnection problem. Routing and interconnection problem is a simulation of a MPC on a BDN. In this problem, the processor and memory module pair is connected, <coughs> sorry, uh, 
The processor and memory module pair is connected through a fixed degree network instead of a fully connecting network. So this leads to a contention on the network on a single cycle because some links should be shared inevitably. There are some theoretical approach to solve this problem. However, before explaining that, I would like to first mention the blind spot that these approach have. This theoretical approach assumes that the single cycle of a processor is the same as transferring a network packet to a remote destination. However, in reality, even though the processors are connected with the state-of-the-art RDMA network, sending a packet to a remote location takes several microseconds. So compared to the CPU clock cycle, that is 100 picoseconds, the network is so easy to be bottlenecked because millions of CPU clock cycles will take similar time to a single network packet transmission. Still, since this is a theoretical approach, we assume that the single processor cycle is the same as single network latency. So, a deterministic solution of this problem is known to have a good average case performance, but bad worst case performance. This is due to the hotspots where some links are more populated, populated compared to the others. There is a way how to diminish the effect of hotspots on deterministic solution. It is called sorting network. The sorting networks are known to have routing time complexity of big O of log n time. However, in order to achieve this time complexity, the degree should be extremely high. So it is infeasible to build this solution in a real machine yet. Here, we'll see how much slowdown happens on a, uh, on a PRAM simulation problem, which is a simulation of a CRCW PRAM on a bounded degree network. I'll start with stating the three sub-problems first. The first sub-problem is concurrent access problem, which we discussed on last class. This problem is simulating a CRCW PRAM on an EREW PRAM. And is, it is known to have a slowdown of big theta of log n using deterministic simulation. The second sub problem is memory management problem. This problem is simulating an EREW PRAM on a model com parallel computer. It is known to have an optimal slowdown of big O of log n divided by log log n. However, this optimal slowdown heavily relies on the copying of the data. And since as the number of copies increases, there will be more contention on the network because single write will impose numerous writes on the network. So this optimal slowdown case will be hard to apply to the overall slowdown. The final sub problem is routing and interconnection problem. This problem is simulating a model parallel computer on a bounded degree network. As we've seen right before, it is known to have the slowdown of big O of log n using sorting network even though creating this network is infeasible. Because of the problem that I stated on the memory management problem, on deterministic simulation, we can't simply combine, combine the optimal time complexity to calculate the total time complexity. So we have to consider memory management problem and routing interconnection problem as a whole. In other words, uh, we have to calculate the slowdown on a simulation of an EREW PRAM on a bounded degree network. The proof of this is complicated, so I won't explain this in this class. 
was simulating on EREWP RAM on a bounded degree network as a slowdown of big O of log n square divided by log log n. In total, the slowdown is a big theta of log n when simulating a CRCWP RAM on an EREWP RAM, and the slowdown is big O of log n squared divided by log log n when simulating an EREWP RAM on a bounded degree network. Therefore, Total slowdown on a simulation of a CRCWP RAM onto a bounded degree network will be big O of log n square divided by log log n. Now, I will discuss about another way of solving the memory management, memory management problem and the routing interconnection problem, which is random simulations. As the word random mean, on random simulations, the behavior of each component is not determined, but it is cho chosen according to the circumstances. These random simulations may have poor average case performance compared to deterministic simulation, but they have better worst case performance. Memory management problem could largely benefit from random approach. Since memory has hotness and coldness in its nature, some memory would have many processor ac processors accessing them, and some memory would have no processors accessing them. Also, because of an important feature of locality, where adjacent data is more likely to be accessed than the data far away, there is a bigger chance of many processors trying to access the memory that is closely related, which will be on the same memory module pool in this design. Therefore, in order to alleviate this contention on the memory, using hash function is a good approach. I think you would all be familiar with hash function, but I'll go through uh, the concept of hash function simply with an easy example. Let's say that the simple hash function h of a is the modular of 7. Then the total hash table would like the figure below. When we add a value that is the key of 8 and 18 respectively, then this value will go to the bucket 1 and 4 respectively like this. Similarly, a value that has the key of 18 will go to the bucket 4. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Finding a value using the keywords works the same. In order to find the value that corresponds to the key 18, we can run the hash function and get the result of bucket 4. Then using this, going to bucket 4 will give us the value that we want. However, in this case, no matter how evenly distributed, there will be a collision on 1 over 7 cases because there are only 7 buckets available. This problem could be solved by using more buckets and the hash function that could efficiently distribute the values in these buckets, but this will come with the cost of more memory allocated to hash, hash table. And on extreme cases, if the keys that come in are 2, 9, 16, 23, and 30, like this, then the corresponding values would all go to bucket one, which will lead to a contention. I, I'm sorry. Uh, then the corresponding values uh, would all go to bucket two, which will, which will lead to a contention on bucket two. In this case, choosing a new hash function that will effectively distribute the values will be needed. For example, choosing a new hash function that is the modular of 11 
each values will go to the bucket 2, 9, 5, 1, and 8 respectively. Like this, hash functions can be used a memory management problem. Here, the key will be the memory location. And in order to react when the hash function works poorly, there should be a monitor that monitors if hash function is working properly, and these monitors will be able to change the hash function when it is working poorly. With all these overhead estimated, the total slowdown on simulating an EREW to MPC using random simulations will be big O of log N times log N times log star N. The worst case behavior on the routing and interconnection problem happens because of the hotspots where some networks are more content contented than others. On random simulations, this is solved with an interesting approach called two-phase random routing. Two-phase random routing sends each packet from the source location to a random destination and then sends the packet to the original destination from the random destination. In deterministic simulations, hotspots happen because some networks are more frequently used than the others. Using two-phase random routing, because the random destination is chosen, the whole process of sending a packet would send a packet from a source to random de destination and then send it from the random destination to the original destination, which will perfect, perfectly distribute the packet sent. The lower bound on the routing problem is big omega of log n. This is due to the fact that the diameter on the bounded degree network is big omega of log n. The term diameter here means that the shortest path that has the longest value lies on the scale of log n. Using two-phase random routing, since the packet, is sent, the packet sent is perfectly distributed, we can see that the slowdown on this will be the two times of the lower bound for having to send a packet twice on each, trans each, each transmission. Therefore, the slowdown on simulating a MPC on a bounded degree network through random simulations will be big theta of log n. Here, we'll see how much slowdown happens on a simulation of a CRCWPRAM on a bounded degree network using random simulations. I'll start with stating the three sub-problems. The first sub-problem is concurrent access problem, which has the optimal slowdown of big theta of log n using deterministic simulation. Because this is a optimal slowdown, it doesn't really need a new random simulation because random simulations typically have a poor average case performance. The second problem is memory management problem. This problem is simulating an EREW PRAM on a model parallel computer. On a random simulations, hash function could be used in order to enhance the worst case slowdown. So the worst case slowdown using random simulations was big O of log N log I'm sorry, log log n times log star n. The final sub problem is routing and interconnection problem. This problem is simulating a model parallel computer on a bounded degree network. Also using random simulations, routing and interconnection problem could be solved with a slowdown of big theta of log n using two-phase random routing. 
Now, unlike deterministic, <coughs> I'm sorry, unlike deterministic simulations, combining the sub problems doesn't impose a new overhead. This is because using hash function doesn't impose any new overhead to the network. Therefore, the total slowdown on simulating a CRCWP RAM on a bounded degree network could be estimated with the addition of all overhead, which will be big theta of log n. In conclusion, we've learned about the basic background of parallel computing. Also, we've learned about an example of parallel computation model called PRAM. We've learned about the types of PRAM and seen that the performance of PRAMs may vary by their types. Then, we've seen how strong PRAMs are by example algorithms, which is sorting and maximum finding. Most importantly, we've learned about the problem that has to be solved in order to apply PRAMs to realistic machine and divided that problem into three sub-problems. These three sub-problems are concurrent access problem, memory management problem, and interconnection problem. We've seen how to estimate the slowdown of these problems using two simulations, deterministic simulations and random simulations. The overall slowdown of PRAM simulation problem using deterministic simulations was big O of log square n divided by log log n. And by using random simulations, it was big theta of log n. This is end of my pre this is end of the two end of the summary of my two presentations. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> right. And uh, as usual, now we're going to take a short break to allow and to encourage you participants to formulate questions and comments about the content. Please do take this uh, <clears throat> opportunity to recall and digest the presentation and um, ask questions. And here we are back online to proceed with the question, Q&A and discussion part of the presentation. So now is your opportunity, your chance to ask questions to Inhui. Yes, you can also ask via chat box agent. Okay, so he just asked where PRAM is actually used and ask if uh can you give us real world applications? Uh so PRAMs are actually very theoretical. Uh as I stated today that routing and interconnection problem uh assumes that the time needed for a network is the same as a CPU clock cycle, which is not true in this reality because network tends to have millions of clock cycles needed. But uh, these PRAMs are an approach for how to design a parallel model and parallel algorithms. So PRAM is a good example 
of a parallel model. And as I know of, there are several parallel algorithms that assumes that the machine is PRAM. So the, yeah, so there are several algorithms that uh, researchers find out that it can work on a PRAM with these kind of uh, time complexity. So in summary, there aren't actually a real world application that really works with a PRAM because there are still some shortcomings to implement PRAM on reality, but I think it is a good approach to learn about parallel algorithms and the theoretical ideas. Yes, uh, I have to add some comments to that. Uh, this is both correct and incorrect <clears throat> in the sense that, uh, uh, yes, it is a theoretical model, um, but uh, as I keep teaching in CS300, it's very important to have such abs abstraction, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, like high level programming languages, for example, are also um, a theoretical approach that hide many aspects, uh, <clears throat> but they uh, enable us to devise algorithms <clears throat> from a, a larger perspective. So when I was a, a, <clears throat> a student, I would uh, uh, write the fastest, what I hope, hope to be the fastest sorting program, hand optimizing things in assembly co code, counting cycles, really um, um, counting CPU cycles. And later only I realized that what I had been implementing was bubble sort, right? Uh, <clears throat> so this is what Donald Kluse calls uh, premature optimization is the root of all evil. And being able to abstract things, that's really what uh, uh, gives a higher level perspective and uh, uh, improved algorithms such as the constant time algorithm for maximization. And after that, uh, then one uh, should really start looking into more detail more closely. Right? So for example, <clears throat> matrix multiplication is a very important problem. And this has been studied first on the PRAM model and then gradually <clears throat> looking more closely into more realistic problems. And also I'd like to share a slide uh, previously. One second, um, here we go. Namely, um, uh, a refined model of the PRM that has been uh, introduced uh, by here, the bulk synchronous parallel model that takes into account the deficiency that Inhi has mentioned, namely <clears throat> that uh, networks are slower to establish communication, but they're very fast once the communication has been established. So if you want to send one single byte, or if you want to send to one kilobyte or one megabyte, basically it takes the same time, right? So, and uh, this is reflected by this refined uh, BSB bulk synchronous parallel model devised by Leslie Valiant, who is a very famous computer scientist at Harvard. And uh, so, yes, uh, so in this sense, uh, in his answer is both correct and incorrect. Uh, the model is theoretical and unrealistic, but it's an important starting point to the de device. Uh, efficient parallel algorithms and then in the next step <clears throat> look more closely into these uh, algorithms analyze them in a more realistic model like this BSP model. Thank you. More questions? Yeah, for example, Inui mentioned this log star. Does everybody know what log star is? Who knows what log star is? Well, if you don't know what log star is, you should have asked, right? 
So who wants to know what lock star is? Then ask. <laughs> What is Lockstar? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not really familiar with this this thing, but as I know of, it is a uh, iterative lock. I'm not really sure, but uh, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think Professor could explain it more. Uh, Yes. Uh, uh, more specifically to us, maybe. <laughs> right. So Hijin actually gave the answer. Hijin, can you yeah, explain it uh, uh, also orally? And you wrote the correct answer in the chat. I searched it in Google and it said, uh, you, you apply the log in some value iteratively and uh sometimes once one day the value bar of log function gonna be less than zero because log is getting getting smaller 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 so when the the value of uh, log log uh, times k and n is getting below than one or one or less than one then it uh then the value of k is log star so that's what why why there is star in there. It means solve for that star. Exactly, that's correct, right? So you know logarithmic running time is very fast, and log log is even faster, right? And then log 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 is even faster, and uh, log star is kind of the ultimate of that. Maybe uh, count how often you can iterate logarithm until you get something that is less than one. Once it is less than one, you can apply log one more time, then it becomes negative, and then you cannot apply log anymore. So it counts how often you can apply log. And this grows even slower than log, 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 iterated, right? So this is a really, really slowly growing function, almost as slowly as the inverse Ackermann function that is also sometimes used in complexity theory. So anything that is log star is uh, even much, much faster than running time log log or log log log. Thank you. Okay, more questions, comment? Yes, what uh, Inhui presented is basically an introductory lecture to parallel algorithms, which is an entire topic of its own. One can talk an entire semester about parallel algorithms. And, uh, and we gave uh, basically a summary <clears throat> and an introductory, uh, two introductory lectures to such a possible uh, success, of course. Thank you so much for that. Can I make some co comments? Yeah, yes, please. Uh, I think the contents of slides are very good and PRAMs models are very good to introduce. But uh, at some point, I think the slides have too much big old notations. So oh. it makes me feel, oh, which, which algorithm is faster? Um, I think, 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 think. And uh, I think it is, it may be good to help uh, real world the latency values such as milliseconds values uh, when we compute on real world machine. So it may help to understand which algorithm is faster and slower and why it's faster and slower. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for a good you. presentation. Thank you. Yes, actually we've already moved to the second part which is supposed to be um, uh, off the record. So let me turn off the recording. So this was the last presentation. Let us all thank Inhui once again. Okay. And this is, uh, this is uh, the end, uh, almost the end. As I said, we're going to have a wrap up. Uh, so for now, uh, you are almost done what remains for you. 
is to write the third and final essay um, uh, summarizing um, the talks about uh, MMORPGs and um, giving some kind of future perspective, uh, your individual future perspective. Again, I will uh, uh, make that assignment formal in KLMS. So if you have uh, some final comments or questions about this course, then now is the chance. It was first time to take this kind of course, course that our lectures are being uh, made by a student. And I think it is very good uh, to do if students are very uh, have uh, energies and passion on that topic. And I think fortunately this class was very uh, patient and have uh, many courage. So I, I, I learned a lot from you guys and very thank you for that. <laughs> yes, so the underlying pedagogical concept is called flipped learning, right? Uh, which is uh, uh, to uh, make uh, students uh, proactively engage in the lecture uh, and study topics, uh, uh, individual small topic, subtopic assignment. And uh, this is uh, one of the aspects that have been encouraged by Kai's President Lee and also by Vice President uh, Tetejik Lee um, as part of this uh, philosophy of Kwais with a Q, right? More comments? So what I'd like us and what I'd like you to do is now everybody turn on the camera for a final picture, a final snapshot of all participants of today's course. 